Howdy all you delicious people. I'm here to review two films, Devil's Revenge and Slither. Slither is not the horror movie that you know has Michael Rooker in it, Nathan Fillion. No, this is the 1993 Sharon Stone, William Baldwin movie, Slither. Very different. Very interesting, though, visually. Uh, really, it goes into a apartment building complex where William Baldwin's character ultimately places cameras all throughout his apartment building, and interesting things happen. Uh, there's mystery going on to this movie, and if you want to know about the mystery, uh, ultimately uh, check it out without a doubt. Both of these movies, Devil's Revenge and Slither, are both on Tubi right now. Ultimate can check them out, or Ultimate can hear what I have to say about both of them. But anyways, let's first off go into Devil's Revenge. Devil's Revenge is, like, it really does have a potential to be something. I think there is, like, one portion of this film where I'm like, you know what, I actually like this portion of film and I think there's, like, the very beginning of it is slow going, and the kind of end of it is kind of, like, slow going, but there's some there's some good piece in the middle there where I'm just like, all right, I can see that this could, like, have a potential to eventually really legitimately be, like, an idea of something or a concept going on. Here's my thing of how I... I'm going to be brutally honest. <laughs> so, when going along into this movie, is only because of one actress. Uh, there is an actress that ultimately I had seen, Power Rangers, Megaforce, and surefire enough, I just landed myself onto uh, looking her up into IMDb at some point. Uh, noticing that she had done some horror films, as well as doing... Power Rangers Megaforce. I was like, hmm, this is kind of interesting. How about I check any number of these movies out? Because maybe there's some uh, interesting movies that are here. Uh, because when scrolling through the titles, I was like, wow, these titles sound really interesting, but what are they about? So, ultimately, uh, Sierra Han had also been in a movie called Blood Lake. I think at some point I had said Timber Lake, but that isn't even right. Uh, maybe I made a joke about that in my head. Um, but anyways, ultimately she had also been in a movie called Devil's Revenge. I'm like, okay, that's, what is that about? I ended up looking up the image and it had William Shatner in it. It's like, Okay, that sounds interesting. Ultimately, I know full well William Shatner from, of course, being in Star Trek and numerous other projects and stuff. He's been in Haven at some point. I always kind of want to ask any of the co-stars of any of the movies that he's ever been in, like, hey, was it was he was he uh how was he to work with? How was he? <laughs> And just to kind of see what their uh, reaction is or what they would say ultimately. And yeah, I, I would love that conversation. <laughs> just to like, you know, there might be stories. You never, every once in a while you get an actor that probably like will tell you like, yeah, this guy, mm, he was great. <laughs> He was great. Anyways. So, here's the two things that I have to say right away about this movie. One, Sierra Hanna never needs to have makeup on. She doesn't. She looks great without it. And two, what the F was William Shatner saying in the very beginning of this film? He goes on this long rant of monologue... No offense to William Shatner, though. It's maybe the script or I don't know. But he goes on this long rant of, like, talking about all of this stuff. 
And he just goes on and on and on. And I'm like, what is he even saying anymore? What are these, What is he even going on about? Talking about all these wars that he's been into. And I'm like, what is, what is even what is even going on in this line of dialogue? I am just like, uh, what is this? There is a portion, though, of a good movie within this film. And, like, the opening of this is kind of, uh, like, funny and it may not need to be. And there might be stuff that ultimately could be looked at as funny when not needing to be. Uh, especially what happens to seemingly Sierra towards the, or Dana towards the end of this movie that kind of confuses me and baffles me a little bit about how they not only show this, this supposed death, uh, not only once, but then did it twice to, to show that we'll, we'll get to that. Believe me. I hope so. I hope I'll remember it because it is really memorable and sticks out to me. Uh, we have a character named RJ who ultimately I know from the art of defense or the art of self-defense that movie. I was like, oh, hey, it's great that that guy was getting gigs. Good for him. Hey, uh, it's cool that he ends up playing seemingly a friend of Sergio that is kind of regretful that... That something happens to seemingly someone into this to these caves at one point, which I'll I'll mention in spoilers. So going into this, some interesting cast of characters, which I'm just like, okay, like it would be interesting to see where every single one of these people all land. I know uh Jerry Ryan, ultimately, who plays Susan in this movie, she had been in, of course, uh, Star Trek Voyager, and she's also in Star Trek Picard, or just Picard, I guess, because I guess Star Trek doesn't, have, doesn't slap their name on that, I guess, maybe. But anyways, so we have a character named Sergio, I believe that's his name, Sergio, who ultimately is kind of the flag bearer of this movie. And he ultimately is coming and getting a relic that is in a cave. Uh, because ultimately his father desperately needs this relic to be able to dispose of it. To be able to get rid of it. And ultimately that is where William Shatner comes in as Sergio's father. And so reasonably, I think there is some visual, visually interesting things going on within the monsters or demons that are going on into this film. I thought that was rather interesting. To me, at some points, this movie does feel like the Denzel Washington film Fallen. Or it does feel like the Daniel Radcliffe movie Horns at some point. Where you have it to where anybody could be a, a demon at some point talking to Sergio, the, the main character, the main focal point of the character, to have him feel fear. But it seems like also Sergio is at points losing his mind and being tortured. And the weird thing about this movie is I just don't really quite understand the ending. Like, I really just don't quite understand... Like, was this a good move of how this ended? Was it a bad move? Was this guy just having a complete 100% dream-like sequence? Uh, or was it all real? 
because of the way it ends. So, let's go into spoilers about this. Let's go into very much in-depth about all this. So, spoiler time. Spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about that time again to spoil this movie. So, we have it within this film. We have... Uh, Sergio, RJ, and one other, one other guy going into this cave. Ultimately, the third guy ultimately uh, slides down this cave and ultimately gets supposedly banged up. I don't really quite know how exactly this person could slide down this cave and hurt himself so badly, but this guy evidently does. Here's the thing that I noticed with some of the outfits that some of these people wear in this movie. I kept seeing like patches kind of over the clothes at some point where I'm like, okay, is this stuff like kind of a repurposed thing where ultimately some of these, uh, some of these things that they were using were probably uh, like police officer uniforms or police coats or maybe flight jackets for some, uh, for some movie or some military movie or something like that, or, uh, some airplane movie or something like that, or like halloween esh like suits or whatever, like they have jumpsuits and stuff like this throughout this movie, and I was like, okay, so... Is it one of those where you can kind of tell like there probably was a badge or or something like that on some of these suits and they just kind of slapped something over it so you wouldn't tell? That's okay. I'm like, hey, man, like movies don't have to be like having the biggest budget at some point, but this movie also got William Shatner. <laughs> so uh, they also got Syrian and they also got jerry ryan so anyways we we have within this movie a guy falling down a cave and he ends up supposedly breaking his ankle ultimately sergio slides down there to check on him ultimately RJ asks for a, uh, like, hey, man, give me a report on, on your situation. And he's like, I broke my ankle. That's the situation, you piece of sh <laughs> I thought the whole breaking, uh, like, the guy throwing it back on that guy that he's, like, that he broke his freaking ankle was, was kind of funny. Uh... Ultimately, we find that this third-party guy is very banged up. And so RJ is checking on this third guy while Sergio is going into and finding seemingly this relic. He ultimately mentions in the cave that he sees something, and then he goes further on to find this relic. Ultimately, he sees it at one point, but then eventually he it vanishes. And then ultimately, Sergio is having to forcibly go back to... Go back for his third-party affiliate person. Because the third-party person ultimately seemed to be... Uh, much more damage than we were led to assume. So, we have to where RJ and Sergio are now realizing this cave isn't safe. Sergio is telling them to leave because whatever happened to their friend is probably going to happen to them. So, it's time for them to go. So, we eventually get it to where Sergio is driving off, calling his, calling his wife Susan, and mentioning, hey, like, something in the caves happened, it was weird. 
and ultimately I like I got the relic and ultimately like I don't know I lost it I couldn't find it or like I thought I saw it and then I got into a coughing fit and then I lost it I lost the relic Susan is mentioning it's like you know what I think you've gone too far when you go into finding all these relics and stuff like that it's like like shouldn't you stop like basically you're just doing this because you're because your father wants you to your father is pushing you to get this relic so eventually we get it to where here's where it happens so and here's the thing that also bugged me in the opening screen when they have all the names plopped down. I was like, okay, wait a minute. So we have not only Sierra Hannah's name, but it says and Sierra Hannah. I was like, one, I don't know how they do stuff in the movie titles and stuff like that, but I would never have an and <laughs> Over anyone's name. Ever. I just feel like that's like, oh yeah, we almost forgot about this person. So I guess, and this person. It should never be like, you should just have the person's name. Like if you're going to say, and guest starring so-and-so, then that's different. Like premiering this actor or actress, then that's okay. But never just and somebody. Like, I feel like I don't like the word and being placed into a into a credits of anything. It feels cheap. And I don't like that at all. So that's the thing that, I, that rubbed me the wrong way. It really did. Because I don't like the word and in a, like, it's either just put the freaking person's name and don't put and any opening of a movie screen. Never did it. So anyways, Sergio, ultimately, goes to his father. And here's where we have this long winded speech within William Shatner at this seemingly uh, stable, which I'm like, oh, what a coincidence. Of course is stable. So William Shatner for most of this movie is a grandfather or father to Sergio. And he's basically telling him it's like, Hey, man, like, buck up. It's like, be a man. It's like, don't wussy out, kind of. And because reasonably, William Shatner goes into this big, huge monologue that goes on and on and on about being in battle and talking about Aztecs and Rio Grandes and all this stuff. And I'm like, what the heck is this dialogue? He's talking about, like, every single war, I think, that has ever happened in his life or something. I'm like, what the heck is this? What is even going on in this dialogue? I don't even understand what it is. I'm 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 just, like, after a while, all it just becomes is hibbity, 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 swibbity, hibbity, 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 swibbity, swibbity, hibbity. Like, I'm like, what, the, what is this dialogue? So... William Shatner's character, Hayes, eventually tells Sergio that he needs him to get this relic. Ultimately, for, I guess, the curse to be lifted of his family, I guess. Sure. And so, like, the very beginning of this movie is so goofy and so weird but eventually we get to an interesting part because ultimately we have, we eventually have it to where 
Sergio is starting to see things. Starting to almost drive him crazy. So, here's where the movie actually picks up and gets interesting. So, we have a tour eventually. Sergio is seemingly desperate to want to see his his family not only susan but then ultimately wanting to see his his kids so ultimately we have sergio who is going throughout this school eventually trying to find uh find his daughter ultimately to find her at some library ultimately talking to some boy it seems like this is uh dana's boyfriend so ultimately it seems that Sergio ends up talking to his daughter and the boyfriend kind of gives uh, some flack to Sergio and so Sergio is ultimately kind of in kind kind of shoves this guy to where ultimately he's like, hey, what the heck? Ultimately, we find Dana's boyfriend in an elevator later completely covered in blood. <laughs> the elevator closes on this boy and reopens in another, in another level, fill the elevator filled with blood. I'm like, okay, well, I guess he's not going to have a very long stretch of anything in this movie. So, sadly enough, uh, ultimately we also have Sergio being met with some other kids at this school that are basically telling him it's like, hey, like, like get ready. It's, you're you're going to... Uh, like, we're coming for you, and this and that, and to me, like, Sergio is, again, having to kind of be afraid of these, of, of whatever this is, whatever these crazy people are telling him. So, eventually, at some point, Sergio uh, continues to walk through this school and sees a, a bunch of demons all eventually placed within this one room and Sergio is just like well like okay this must be like all my imagination as well but it seems like all these demons eventually kill every single one of these guys that otherwise were telling Sergio off so every single person that the demons possess, they end up killing these people later on, which I thought was interesting. Again, making this quasi feel like the Denzel Washington movie Fallen or Daniel Radcliffe movie Horns, but reasonably like it's it's the demons that actually go and take out these people afterwards after supposedly possessing them and taking control of them so eventually we get it to where within this film that sergio needs to go after this relic he needs to go back into the caves to find this relic he needs to do whatever he needs to do to get this relic back because ultimately uh, Susan had gotten a call from Hayes, William Shatner, uh, ultimately telling her off camera, of course, because, um, that they need to get this relic. They ultimately, like, the whole family is relying on getting this relic. So ultimately we have to where Susan is like, you know what, I want to come with you, uh, to get this relic. Sergio's like, mm, you know what, I don't know. And Susan's like, you know what, like, our kids have come with you into these caves before. 
like I have come with you to be in these caves. What's the difference? And Sergio's like, mm, you know what? I don't know. So. The interesting part eventually kind of fizzles out into eventually there being a, okay, a long stretch of, like, walking into a cave. We have it to where Sergio is calling upon every single one of his family members to go along with him on this, uh, this cave adventure. Before that... They are going to try to go to uh, the third party affiliate's funeral that ended up dying earlier on in the movie. RJ won't let them come into the funeral, and so reasonably, we also have it to where it seems like every one of Sergio's family members is starting to get some knowledge upon, well, mostly Dana, is kind of reading up on the knowledge about these demons. And still, <laughs> even, you could read me a book about this entire, you could tell me everything that is going on about, like, Aztecs or Mayans or demons or all this stuff, and I can't remember a lick of it as for, as well as a bulk of this movie, just because in all rationality, there's something about the writing of this film that doesn't feel like 100% concrete. But again, I thought there was some, like, there was a portion in this movie that I was like, you know what, I like the whole cave thing. I like the whole cave adventure. I, I like the whole portion of which were... Uh, Sergio is starting to see things and ultimately uh, it's getting to the point to where ultimately everyone is being supposedly possessed to kind of haunt him to tell him uh, what is coming and that he should be uh, living in fear of eventually when these demons will come for him because ultimately he had touched the relic but then ultimately misplaced it because he had a coughing fit so Eventually, lining all these kids together to ultimately have them all go on this cave advert excursion, all getting them into these bizarre-looking Ghostbuster-ish like jumpsuits because they're hunting ghosts, evidently, uh, but they're fighting demons in a cave, which they don't actually fight them. So here's the thing. So we eventually have this long stretch of them going in this cave, and I'm like, Man, this cave walking is taking a long time. This is reminding me of like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, where they would have to literally walk everywhere in that movie to get to somewhere. And I was like, okay, like this is this is a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of cave walking. But then again, it reminded me of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, so I I would give them a break because ultimately, when watching that movie and watching this, like. Yeah, so we ultimately have uh, we ultimately have Dana who ends up l like the strongest woman you've ever known, just sliding down a place that almost killed a man before, like it's nothing. <laughs> she easily does it like it's nothing, of course. So recently everybody else goes down there into the caves and ultimately they easily just collect this relic ultimately we have sergio having susan put this thing in his backpack and here's where the movie starts to get goofy a little bit to me so we have to where these demons show up behind Sergio's son, Eric. Ultimately, uh, Dana is mentioning, it's like, hey, we found it. And Eric's like, I can't hear you because I'm too busy taking cool pictures uh, with me and like uh, spears and such. And look how cool I am. 
so demons start to arrive within this cave and so quite easily and simply we have it to where demons start to kill every single member of this family besides Sergio but I obviously can't understand one of the family members' deaths. So, <laughs> we have it to where Eric ends up getting stabbed and killed. I'm like, okay, all right, uh, that's a okay death to me. Here's the thing, though. So, we have Dana, who ends up getting seemingly put into some wrestling maneuver. And so she ends up getting seemingly killed by a wrestling maneuver. And I just don't quite understand how exactly that is called a death. They not only had to show this once... But they had to show this twice to confirm she died by wrestling move. What the f is this? How could you die by that wrestling move? That makes no sense. I I don't I don't I don't quite understand that one. Uh, I guess anybody will have to look that back and see that evidently Dana. Dies by wrestling move. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there was some part there where, like, it was supposed to show that, like, broke her spine or something with this move. I don't know. To me, it just looked like wrestling move that didn't make any sense to have someone to die on. Maybe, like, the fall was supposed to be so hard that it must have crushed her spiners? I don't know. Maybe there was supposed to be some edge of a rock that they were supposed to show, but they never did. Or maybe this person falls into a ravine or something. I don't know. But all I saw was this person dies by wrestling move, and I don't understand this at all. So ultimately we have Susan that seems to die a reasonable way. Because ultimately we have big gigantic sword by this head demon person that uh, all the other demons have to hold Susan down. It seems like they're really taking their time with Susan's death and having this big sword to stab Susan in the chest. Sergio is all lost for words and ultimately he is barely being held down and he loses it. Yeah. Okay, sure. All right. Hey. Like I it's probably very difficult to be sad in a movie. It, it is. Look at any try to people that try to cry in a film. It's severely hard. It's severely hard to be sad or cry in a film. It is. So we ultimately have Sergio who wants I guess figuring out uh, that all his family is dead without double checking on Dana, uh, he ultimately takes his his bag, which ultimately has the relic, and he ends up running off into his into his seemingly RV, and ultimately calling his father but before before that happens he ends up or he ends up calling yeah he ends up calling his father who is William Shatner and William Shatner is seemingly on this doom, doom buggy this little uh, go-kart ish like thing uh, which is all kind of I guess camouflagely decked out ultimately we have a progress report where uh, William is asking where uh, Sergio is. Ultimately, he tells him he's by the river. He's like, okay, well, 
uh, Hayes says, it's like, well, I'll make my way to you. Like, just stay there. So, we have Sergio who has the relic, but then eventually the demons seem to take that from him. So, while also Sergio was calling Hayes, he mentions that his wife had called him, that that Susan had called Hayes on her satellite phone, saying that she was fine, that she was in the cave. And Sergio mentions, like, well, wait a minute. I saw them all die. How are they all still alive in the cave? He's like, well, she called me. She called me on the satellite phone. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Wait a minute, what? <laughs> so, sure, fire enough. Uh, Hayes makes his way, or Shatner makes his way to Sergio. And ultimately, of course, Sergio is bub kissed without the relic. So they have to go back into the cave again to seek out this relic, but not only that, get uh, Sergio's family back, who we assumed were dead, but evidently were not. Maybe Sergio was having some acid trip. I don't know. Uh, and again, his daughter died by wrestling moves. So again, clearly she didn't die. So maybe... <laughs> clearly... <laughs> I want to figure out what the idea was, how that she was supposed to die. Maybe I missed something within wrestling move. I'm not sure. Maybe there was supposed to be some breaking of the back maneuver that I missed. And I, I, I went back and tried to watch this a couple of times to see if there was some kind of maneuver within this that could equal death. And I was like, no, not seeing anything. Not seeing anything. Sadly enough, for uh, for a, a, a character named Dana. So, reasonably within this, we ultimately have Sergio go back to the cave. Uh, we have William Shatner that has a big effing gun. That he is going to tell us how high tech it is and... Ultimately, he is also going to have this seemingly mapping system that ultimately comes from some satellite somewhere that is to tell us a heat signature of Sergio's family to confirm that they are all still alive. So ultimately, the plan is, is that William Shatner's character is going to be the the person that comes in and saves everyone's life with his big effing gun that is supposed to that is supposed to eventually take down every single one of these demons support well kind of just delay them delay them i guess from getting anywhere but also the bigger plan is to eventually explode this whole cave so, we have it to where Sergio and Hayes ends up going back into this cave. We have it to where William Shatner's character is seemingly firing off this, this big gun, which just has some kind of explosion effects, which... Clearly, you can tell there are effects, but hey, like, it's hard to, it's hard to, to, like, they don't want their, their demon people to get hurt. We also, at a point, had Sergio also, before William Shatner arrives to 
uh, let him know he has a big gun and a satellite thing that could have heat signatures. We had JR that has a group of, of guys to beat up Sergio and William Shatner arrives to tell all these men to leave him alone. Ultimately, all of the demons end up tearing every single one of these men apart and to make them look really strong and make them look really cool while eventually they're coming up with a plan to go after these demons. I just wanted to bring that up so ultimately uh, it doesn't feel like I forgot anything. So going into this, yeah, we push on. Ultimately, William Shatner explodes his way with a gun uh, to take down these demons. Eventually, it seems like uh, Shatner becomes subdued. Sergio ends up coming to his evade. And Hayes mentions to Sergio that he loves him. Ultimately, because Sergio gives Susan the relic and tells them to run... Ultimately, Sergio is coming back for his father to try to protect him, but eventually, uh, Hayes tells Sergio to run, uh, to get out of there. And what ends up happening is Sergio and family are all in the front of the cave, and this explosion goes off, leaving Hayes in the cave to die. So... What happens next is we think that everything is, is peachy. Uh, Sergio ends up cutting the relic in half, ultimately throwing it in the fire. Uh, it seems that Sergio has made peace with every single one of his family. Uh, ultimately, we have a huzzah huzzah moment. Ultimately, Sergio goes to bed with his wife. But then, bizarrely, there is this moment here where we have a demon within... Because we have Susan ultimately talking about, like, the battle between God and the devil. And then, ultimately, Susan either becomes a demon or the demon is holding on to Susan and... Sergio is fighting to get his Susan from this demon grasp. Then we find out that Sergio is in this hospital fighting for his life. And I'm like, what is even going on at the end of this movie? I don't quite understand. So we have Sergio seemingly fighting for his life. Also, he's having these bizarre dream sequences. And it's leading to him eventually deciding to... <laughs> Excuse me. To give up on his life. To call it quits. To call it. Uh, ultimately, his father is mentioning to him, Hey, like... Like, you've earned this. It's okay. It's like... If anything, it's your time kind of thing. And so, reasonably, Sergio lets it go and dies. And that is just how the movie ends. And I am like, what? So, did he just get hurt while in the cave all along? And all the rest of this was just some dream sequence of where Sergio was going to end up in the afterlife? Then again, William Shatner was also dead. Was Sergio, was William Shatner dead all along? I don't know, but I'm going to go along into talking about sli Sliver. Sliver. So, Here's a cryptic, like, download of this movie. So, we have William Baldwin, who ultimately is seemingly a game designer. Not only that, but he owns an apartment building. So, if you've never seen movies like 14 Cameras, or if you've never seen 
Oh, God. Uh, the movie, I think, Night Clerk, which ultimately had the guy that played uh, Cyclops and Ready Player One in it. Uh, ultimately, he had, uh, as John Leguizamo in that movie. Uh, I think also Helen Hunt is in that as well. So, the Night Clerk ultimately is, is kind of in the ballpark of this Slither, Sliver movie. I want to say slither so badly, but it's not. It's sliver. So let me pause here because I need to get some actors' information. Let's pause. All right. So within this within this movie, we have Sharon Stone who plays Carly, and we have William uh, William Ballion. Blah, blah, we have William Baldwin's character that ultimately plays Zeke. And so Zeke ultimately is the game developer and apartment owner. And it seems like Carly, we I'm like not I'm like not quite understanding exactly what her job is. It seems like she is a person that is involved with novelists but it seems like she's also quasi more than that maybe she is a novelist herself i don't know it seems like her career doesn't 100 percent feel quite clear to me but when looking at it i don't think it really matters does it so going into this movie we have it to where Zeke's character is finding a very much fascination with Carly because reasonably he is the one that is able to pick which person can go on to be living in his apartment buildings. It seems like he likes women, of course, and he falls seemingly for every single woman that is in this apartment complex until eventually he maybe runs out of usefulness of them or reasonably eventually finds them to be people that will be a person that at some point he kills off. Because ultimately at some points that is the mystery behind this movie of is of is it all Zeke? Is it all somebody else? Could it be someone else? I think justifiably there is a good answer behind all this. I think I think the only problem with this movie is how it exactly ends. Because it doesn't give a clear consensus of what all happens. It doesn't say, oh yeah, like just letting you know Zeke's character, yeah. He's been go he went to prison after all this because there's a lot of evidence. Uh, showcasing that he's this guy that did all of this. Yeah, you don't really know. It just kind of just ends, and you're like, man, that I don't like how it just this movie just ends. It's kind of weird. But the whole thing about it is the romanticism of it. How Zeke's character is desperate to have uh, Carly love him. And to where he is, I think at some point, smothering, smothering her. But reasonably, there is a point in time to, to have Zeke really wanting to push Carly to see how far she will really go. And to reasonably see if Carly will match everything that he asks. So, going into this, yeah, it's an enjoyable murder mystery, and so it seems like there is a innocence of William, William's character. There is something interesting about Zeke and Carly that they are just so drawn to one another 
and I found that to be very interesting. I I found it to be very like wow, this is this is awesome. I really like the like they can't like they can't just like not just let this go or William will obviously won't let it go. Uh, William's character Zeke, I mean, so. Going into this, yeah, I thought it, I really enjoyed the film. There was something about it that just felt different to me. That that struck me as just like, okay, this is a point where eventually Zeke is going to share his life seemingly with Carly. And maybe it goes a little bit too far. So, let's go into spoilers about this movie. Because at the end of the day... Um, Deception, Hugh Jackman, try a lot of other, uh, you could ultimately go into this movie and, and have it go into several others. Uh, Basic Ding Synced, of course, reasonably, uh, you could probably, uh, American Psycho could also be another movie that you could try out. It kind of feels like a, a business movie. Uh, that's the, that's the whole thing when you gotta get, like, maybe even, uh, Mr. Brooks maybe might be a little bit of a, a thing quasi like this at some point. Uh, as far as a, a kind of, a journeys of, of such. Blah, 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 blah. Anyways, so... Let's go into spoilers about this. Let's let's dust out the double five really quickly and to go into spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about that time again to spoil this movie. Man, I just the overall spoiler thing is just ruined right now. I don't know why. But anyway, so we have in the very beginning of this movie a woman, a woman, a woman, a woman, a, a woman. Falling from her apartment building. She's like, okay, wow, that's a interesting opening, I guess, for this movie. Because <laughs> ultimately, the mystery surrounding surrounding this person's death makes this to be an interesting film. So. We have Carly, who eventually needs a new place to live. So ultimately, she applies to otherwise this apartment building. Ultimately, she ends up getting in. She ends up getting into this this apartment building that it seems like Carly's character and the previous owner of Naomi looked exactly alike. It's very strange. Ultimately, to where Carly gets so bugged about this, that ultimately she looks this previous Naomi singer or singer up uh, to ultimately see if she does look like her, and she does. So... Carly eventually starts talking to some of her neighbors. Ultimately, it seems like there's one guy eventually going to Japan, but ultimately he uh, lets her know about the previous owner of this apartment building, or about her apartment room being previously rented out uh, by Naomi. Ultimately, he had told her that he had been friends with Naomi, and... Ultimately, it's like, hey, you just, you look just like her. So, we have it to where eventually Carly is going to work, going to her business, uh, to ultimately be, seemingly have this one writer fall into her lap, ultimately a character named Jack. Jack seems to be very, and I mean very pushy, basically telling that, well, since she's going to work with Jack, that ultimately he is going to send her his book. Basically telling her, yeah, like, I'm all, like, I'm all kinds of shit, and you, like, are gonna love me. 
which ultimately she doesn't. So, reasonably we have it to where Carly gets home and eventually notices that Jack had sent her this book and then ultimately also notices that someone had sent her a telescope with the words, from your secret admirer. So reasonably, eventually, Carly eventually sifts around to ultimately see who is the person that sends her, that had sent her this telescope. And ultimately, at first, while being surprised by Jack via this, uh, this jog, uh, where ultimately Jack is hitting on uh, Carly the whole time, ultimately kind of cementing it's like hey how about we go out for dinner how about we uh how about we go to bed together kind of thing like because ultimately i know that you're that you read my book that ultimately you love me and you're not going to say it ultimately carly wants nothing to do with jack ultimately she's like no like i'm i'm not interested at all there's no way that i want to do anything with you Ba 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 ba. So, but Jack won't give up. Jack won't give up at all. If at any points there are some times where it seems that Jack is consistently going into Carly's room or apartment room without her, without her knowing, it seems that. Ultimately, Jack is getting supposedly keys from the super uh, to get into this apartment room. Or ultimately, he mentions, it's like, oh, hey, the door was open. Yeah, right. Bullshit. <laughs> so, we have it to where eventually... Carly is going uh, about her, her days and going into uh, an elevator. And we find Zeke, who is happy to help uh, Carly with her, with her heavy bags because she's moving into this apartment room. He helps her move in, or he's, he's trying to help her, like, uh, move these heavy boxes, like... Hey, like, I'll, like, I'll, hey, is this getting too heavy for you? Do you want me to grab this? Like, I'll be happy to do that for you. So, so Carly is new to this building. So Zeke is trying to be very friendly. He's ultimately, like, telling her some very, uh, some much cheaper or reasonable uh, grocery stores to go into and, and everything like that. So, Eventually, Zeke is, is, I think, trying to muster up the courage, I think, to figure out words to come up together to, like, talk to Carly more or trying to coming up with more to say. But eventually Carly mentions, it's like, hey, like, I, I guess these boxes are really starting to get very heavy. And so then eventually Zeke just leaves uh, onto his floor. So, eventually we start to notice that Zeke does seem to have images of every single person in the entire building. Seems like he's getting knowledge from every single room, and at some points, he is getting, uh, like, camera footage either outside of the building or inside of the building and getting to hear and see everything. So, eventually, it is starting to lead to where people are starting to end up dead. We basically have uh, the guy that was talking to Carly earlier about... Uh, her previous apartment or her previous uh, room owner being dead and 
ultimately he ends up dead in his shower. We ultimately have a Vida who also talks to Carly and mentions how her and Naomi were best friends and and this and that. So ultimately we also find out that Vida does drugs and stuff like that, kinda does some nose candy and that's completely okay. So because reasonably she's not the main character and ultimately we probably figure at some point she's probably going to die because reasonably this person is giving up information and of course that'll eventually lead to her death i would assume so we eventually have within this movie that when they find out the death of of the of the guy that was talking to Carly earlier eventually William and Carly or eventually Zeke and Carly are both are both at this uh impasse of telling anything that they know about this uh this other gentleman who ended up dying in this shower so Carly mentions is like well hey like he told me that he was going to Japan and that ultimately he, uh, him and Naomi, the previous owner of my apartment room, were uh, best friends and yada, yada, yada. It's not anything that kind of reveals anything uh, reasonably. So, eventually, it seems that Carly is putting together some party with all of her professional friends. Eventually, Jack invites himself to this party and so reasonably we have it to where uh also Zeke is going to this party as well it seems that Jack when invited to this party brings in Don Perignon and when Zach comes into or Zach when Zeke comes into this party he brings in California Red Ultimately knowing full well that Zeke seemingly knows Carly's favorite drink. And because ultimately that's the thing about him. He knows every single thing that Carly loves, so he uses it against her. So when... So when people are starting to talk about business stuff, about how they're kind of unsure about some businesses, it seems like Zeke is kind of thinking about uh, one business, but Jack is kind of putting him down. That it's like, no, I think there's something uh, more going on with this business. It could be a big drug ring and like we not even know about it. Like we might as well not even... Uh, live anywhere near this building because ultimately who knows what, what could go on and Zeke is thinking it's like well maybe that's a bright idea kind of like Carly is like maybe seeing this as a metaphor and Maybe Zeke is also giving this off as a metaphor as, like, get away from Jack because reasonably, like, he's he's just a guy that is creating some kind of ruckus within this party and that he's kind of a, a party buzzkill. And so reasonably, he wants nothing to do with... Uh, he wants nothing to do with Jack because it seems like he is just kind of spreading controversy or spreading uh, stuff that he probably doesn't even know anything about. So Zeke goes upon himself to just read a, a newspaper or magazine because ultimately it doesn't really seem like he is talking to much of anybody at some point. Eventually Carly uh, goes to him because it seems like she's easily taking a liking to this person because again, she uh, he brought her favorite drink. So, uh, 
eventually Zeke makes the offer because it seems like everyone is starting to leave. Zeke makes the offer to have her work out with him, you know, like lift weights and stuff at a gym, which ultimately now you can't actually do that kind of stuff. But uh, if anything, if you have the equipment and you know how to eventually uh, work uh, via cheap and reasonable men's, you can kind of eventually do quasi anything, uh, especially if you just have the right kind of stuff eventually to work your way up to things. So, Zeke offers to go to a gym. Ultimately, Carly's like, you know what? There's too many mirrors in that gym. And Zeke's like, oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. There's no mirrors in that gym. Come on, just come with me once, and then, like, you'll never hear uh, me ask about it again. So, Zeke is mentioning, like, 10 o'clock. Are you... Are you would you be ready to, to go to the gym at 10 o'clock? Like, I'll, I'll call you. So, eventually Zeke leaves, and so Jack pops in, again, trying to be the last one at this party. And ultimately, Zach, or Zach, Jack is mentioning, well, hey, like, I know, like, you may, like, go to the gym, but ultimately, maybe you'd want to later on go to the, go to dinner with me. So, what ends up happening is Carly ends up going to the gym with Zeke. And reasonably here is the thing that I liked about this whole gym workout thing. Is we have it to where it seems that Zeke is ultimately working on these machines. And, and Carly is noticing... Oh, I guess there is a lot of mirrors in this gym. And Zeke is just like, Oh, I guess they must have just installed all these. Like, who cares if there's a ton of mirrors in this gym? It's a gym. Who cares? It doesn't matter. So there's mirrors. So what? It's like, it doesn't matter. That's not the point of all this. So, we ultimately have... Zeke, who is doing this seemingly leg machine, I don't know what it's called, because I don't know every single machine of a of a gym. Like, there's some stuff that's familiar to me and some stuff that's not. So, ultimately, we have, uh, we have Zeke working on this uh, machine, working on his legs, and so ultimately, Carly is mentioning or kind of like on, like off to the side hesitant. And Zeke is mentioning like, well, hey, how about you get up on this machine and I'll show you how to use it. She's like, oh, gee, I don't know how to do that. And like Zeke is like, like, sure you can, you can do anything. And so reasonably we don't see her actually use this machine, but eventually Carly tries to use some other machine and, like, she is kind of, like, uh, doing this, like, motion, kind of, like, thrusting back and forth. And so Zeke gets right behind her and really is, like, showing her, suppose, is showing her how to use this machine. But really, it's like, yeah, all you need to do is put your hips into it. And, like, he's basically putting his hands on her hips and Tor ultimately trying to, one, uh, kind of hit on her, but also just kind of like cementing. It's like, well, yeah, like, we are going to have fun at this gym, and it's going to be much more than just lifting weights coming on here. And, like, it's also to make you feel better about your body and ultimately, like, we have at some point where Zeke notices that Carly's character seems to be fantasizing about something. Uh, maybe fantasizing about uh, the guy that she met in the elevator and having some bath time, which ultimately I won't get into because adult content. 
So, Zach just naturally assumes that it's him. And that she's thinking about with her, with her tub time. So, eventually after this workout, like, basically Zeke is mentioning, like, you know what? Like, this wasn't that rough, now was it? So, recently they are kind of going about the streets. And ultimately there seems to be some TV that ultimately, uh, when they look into like closer into these TVs, they can see themselves in it. Ultimately, as Zeke mentioning to Carly, that it's like, well, hey, like, I bet you probably won't want to date me because I'm younger than you. Like, you probably will think that, but, like, I'm really not. So... We have it to where... It seems that this It seems like they uh we have Zeke letting Carly know that he's a game designer and that ultimately he like that's what he does for a living. So eventually it pushes Carly to want to see his apartment. Ultimately, he's playing the music that she likes, of course. Because uh, ultimately, he asks, like, hey, do you like the music? And she's like, yeah, I listen to it all the time. Uh, eventually, he gives her a uh, a California Red. And it gets to the point where eventually they are sitting together. And eventually, it gets to the point where Zeke is kind of pushing the threshold of like cementing that he likes her and that he wants to spend a little bit more time with her in a bedroom business like fashion so ultimately when we were at the party and Everyone was there looking at what was going on within this telescope. Because we find out that uh, Carly likes to gawk at people with her telescope. And eventually we find out that one of the people at this party were looking through the telescope. Finding out that some people were, let's just say, having some bedroom business. So everybody in the party also starts looking through this telescope to see if this le is legitimate. And uh, fortunately it is. And so everybody's like, hmm, this is great. And Jack is kind of like being the pariah and mentioning like, how could you guys look at this? Like, what is going on with these people? And like, as if he's like better than anybody. Um, come on, Jack. But anyways, so... Uh, so now we have it to where uh, Zeke and Carly are getting much more intimate, much more closer. And so reasonably there are clothes starting to unfurl. And Carly is mentioning it's like, well, hey, like the windows are open. People will see. And and ultimately Zeke is mentioning it's like, let me see you. So eventually there is a long stretch of sequence where let's just say that they are seeing one another and they're seeing themselves in all their glory for a very long period of time, which any of this stuff that I have to further on say will in a lot of, lay, a lot of ways be just called adult content. And so stretching it to seemingly more and more be a thing where at some point, is it? It's a starting and stopping thing where it's just like, well, hey. To the point of them being utterly exhausted, and, but still pressing on more and more. So, reasonably, eventually, we get it to where Carly eventually arrives at work. I'm like, dude, how long has she been gone for? Has she been gone for like a week? Like, how long has this stretch of time been going on? Like, I'm assuming. 
it had to have been like hours upon hours and hours you would have to assess but who knows maybe uh carly called for a sick day anyways so we have carly who i guess completely missed her dinner dinner date with jack because she completely blew him off but that doesn't seem to come up so We have it to where Carly goes to work and ultimately her co-worker is asking her about like, hey, like you look like you've been like you've been with somebody, let's just say. Uh, and so ultimately her co-worker wants all the details. Carly is mentioning it's like, well, hey, I met with uh, like I was with Zeke. She's like, who? It's like. Like Zeke, the the oh, and she's like, oh, the 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 hot young piece that was at your party, that guy, yeah. So ultimately, she her coworker mentions that he she ended up being forcibly shacked up with, uh, or really shacked up, but not you know like getting any real business going on in the bedroom with Jack and she's like yeah like we didn't actually do anything the entire time all he did was ask me about you like are you gonna end up with this guy like shouldn't you marry him and this and that and and Carly is just like god why is this guy why is this guy trying so effing hard really it's just so Eventually, we have it to where there is a sentence or some sentences already being typed up on Carly's computer. And it seems like Carly is trying very much to finish this. And instead, it seems like her computer malfunctions for a second. And then ultimately, we have a typing showcasing to us like, hey, do any of your parts hurt? Like, I miss you. You smell like roses. And ultimately, we have a picture of a rose. So, ultimately, we are to figure out that this message is coming from Zeke, who ultimately, I guess, can control this person's computer and send them messages or send them uh, little uh, computer codes and such. So, eventually, we have it to where... Sharon, or eventually Carly ends up going home, eventually getting uh, a seemingly tons and tons of roses all delivered to her room. So, reasonably, it seems that Jack is also at this apartment as well. And so, reasonably... Jack is coming up with the assumption that he thinks that Zeke has something to do with the previous uh, Naomi death. And that supposedly uh, that Naomi was having an affair with him at some point. Having an affair with, with Zeke. And there's something about this Zeke guy that is rubbing him the wrong way. Ultimately telling Sharon to call some lieutenant from some police force and ultimately Sharon ultimately or ultimately uh, Carly is not buying this she's basically mentioned like hey you're making me very uncomfortable and the next time that you end up just walking into my room I'm gonna have you kicked out Ultimately, I believe Jack is mentioning to Carly that Zeke is the owner of this building. Ultimately, Carly confirms this with Zeke, and Zeke's tell, Zeke tells her the truth. Uh, ultimately mentioning that... That, yes, he is the... He is the owner of this building. 
uh, seemingly consistently telling her the truth. Ultimately, Carly asks if if he is the reason that her her application to this apartment went went through so quickly. It's like, well, ultimately, Zeke says, well, yes, like there was something about you that I really needed that I felt I needed to like get to know or something. So Carly is realistically just infatuated with this man to the point where ultimately he sends her a gift, which is some, uh, some lingerie of sorts. Ultimately she, uh, she, smells it and ultimately she enjoys it so we have it to where they go to dinner together and while they're going to dinner together they're playing poker ultimately a fake game of poker that doesn't actually have any cards uh ultimately what they kind of do is they kind of like they supposedly have cards in their hands Ultimately, we have Zeke that is pushing Carly to let him know if he is actually wearing, uh, or if she is actually wearing the lingerie that he sent her. Ultimately, she says yes. He's like, well, is there any proof of that? Is there any way that you can show me that you are? Ultimately, uh, at first, Carly is very hesitant uh, kind of barely shows, but uh, Zeke is like, you know what? I can't really, I can't really tell. I can't really see that far. I'm not really that. So Carly is like starting to realize that there are other people quasi watching them. But at some point she's like, well, hey, F it. I don't care. So reasonably, eventually she shows him all good and well that, yeah, she is wearing what he gave her and he's like okay well how about the underwear so reasonably again there's a slight hesitation uh ultimately to the point where it's like well again i can't see how can i tell so reasonably eventually carly eventually hands him the underwear uh disrobing within her dress within this place handing him the underwear and ultimately because Zeke says it's like well I won this round you lost but then eventually Carly gives him the underwear and says no I won you lost so he's like well I guess that's game then so we have it to where they are just connected to one another in this elevator let's just say and we have it to where of course carly's floor is first up and or we have uh zeke's floor that i believe is first up and so eventually he leaves so we are to assume that carly uh, goes to her room, but instead ends up making her way back to Zeke's room. Troll to me, she is looking around for him. Ultimately, for him to surprise her from behind and ultimately go into uh, yet another adult content bedroom business scenario. So... Eventually, it gets to the point within this movie where deaths are starting to, at some point, pile up. Because, reasonably, these deaths have to go somewhere. Somebody has to be tied to them. So, we... eventually have it to where Zeke is telling Carly that 
it seemed that Jack had been otherwise tied to some of the women that had either been tied to Naomi or had been tied to Vida and this and that. Uh, ultimately, kind of mentioning that it seemed Jack had ties to every person that had probably died uh, or is going to die within this place. Carly tries to confirm this with Vida and Vida is so busy and she needs to leave that ultimately it seems like there is power that goes out and ultimately leaving Vida to want to stroll down these steps. We have it to where there seems to at the very end of these steps be some masked assailant that ends up stabbing Vida repetitively. We ultimately find that Carly is also going to come down these stairs to ultimately find it to where Vida is dead and Jack is there. And so Carly ends up running up her, uh, running up to her room to call the police on Jack because he was the person there, uh, supposedly killing Vida. So they fill out a report. Basically, they mention it's like, well, more than likely Jack will probably get off on bail and this and that. So also while Jack is being interrogated about this whole situation, it seems like the evidence is stacking up against him. It seems like there are photos of him in some other uh, person's place. It seems like there are also a lot of uh, evidence about him being placed in certain scenes and this and that. So uh, Jack is asking for his lawyer. The cops are like, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, just lawyer up right now because we got everything on you. So... Eventually, the detective is mentioning that Jack will eventually easily make bail. So, ultimately, this isn't all, like, crisply, cutly tied in nice and neat and nice little bow. So, reasonably, we have it to where... To where Zeke at some points is trying to comfort uh, Carly at some points to, to supposedly figure out what is going on. Ultimately, at some points, it seems Carly is asking if Zeke at some point had any ties with Naomi. And ultimately, Zeke mentions, is like, well, yeah, I, I don't think I barely even know her. And... So, recently at some points, Carly is kind of leaving a distance within Zeke because she mentions that she doesn't want to get hurt. So, yeah, eventually we lead to... Eventually there being cementingly more and more... To the point of where... Jack ultimately is yet again at Carly's apartment. While Zeke and Carly are at, uh, are coming upon her apartment, because ultimately what happens is Carly ends up coming to her apartment, Jack ends up coming to tell her that it's not him it's it's Zeke and Jack ultimately has a gun uh Zeke ends up coming uh, to to Carly's evade and then all of a sudden there at some point there seems to be these accusations coming back and forth uh, it seems like eventually they are wrestling with this gun and 
ultimately leads to Jack eventually being shot, being killed. So reasonably, Jack is dead. We asset, we have to assess that Jack had just killed all these people and that Zeke is completely in the clear. That he's actually a good guy, I guess. So we have to where Carly ultimately cannot be in her apartment room anymore because knowing full well that Jack had died there and plus she doesn't feel safe because Jack consistently would come in there and whenever he wanted. So Zeke mentions is like, be safe, be safe with me. Like, come with me, just live with me for however long you need to. So she does this. And so, cause at some point Carly tries to go to her work but she can't even figure out what she, what she can do when she gets there. So Zeke is like, hey, just come home. Just come home to me. Uh, reasonably uh, leaving her a, a note within her computer, like telling her that he loves her and, and everything like that. So eventually it just gets to the point to where Zeke wants to become completely honest with Carly. And let her in on everything. Because ultimately he is telling her that he loves her. And so he's going to let her in on all of his secrets. So we have it to where Zeke finally tells Carly that he has a secret room. That he can see every single apartment building. Apartment room. And see every single people and every single person within it. And know every th single thing about every apartment room. So we get it to where Carly is eventually at some point hesitant about all of this. But then eventually comes back in and starts watching it really goes into watching all single aspects of everything and at some point starts to look at certain rooms and look at certain people to where Zeke is giving her information about these people and like it seems that Carly is almost at some points desperate to want to do something about this but she doesn't which Zeke steps in and he does because there is one girl that ultimately is being uh, is being put wrong by her father. So reasonably, eventually, Zeke calls uh, this father up to mention, hey, I know what you're doing. Stop it. Uh, don't do what you're doing to your daughter anymore. Stop what you're doing. So eventually, Zeke calls Carly to tell her what he had done because ultimately... Carly is sharing an elevator with them and with this father and this daughter and he's and she's very uncomfortable. She's looking at them and she's like, oh my, I know what you're doing. So eventually Zeke steps in and stops this from happening, which eventually you'll see the uh, the father and daughter have a talk to ultimately he is going to tell her it's like, yeah, like. I am never going to do this again. This is wrong. And if anything, like, you'll, it'll never happen again. Uh, ultimately, Carly is like, wow, we did, we did something good. And Zeke's like, well, yeah, like, that's the whole point of this. This is like reality TV show and at, at its finest. And really, eventually, we can take some of these things and do some good out of it. So... Eventually, it gets to the point to where Carly's mentioning, it's like, well, like, how many times have you probably, like, taped me? How many times have you showed me? So, eventually, it gets to the point where she uh, gets to see herself uh, 
being in some uh, some position, let's just say, to where ultimately it leads them to, uh, let's just say, fall in love with one another. Because ultimately they are enjoying this, this tape watching together, let's just say. So but then eventually Carly wants her own privacy. She wants her own life and doesn't want... Uh, the tapes of everything that Zeke has on her. And Zeke is like, well, you know what? If I have you, what do I need the tapes for? So ultimately, he showcases to her that he is going to erase her tapes. So while Zeke is getting her tape. Carly realizes that he has some secret stash. So while Zeke is getting uh, this tape out of the secret stash, he erases the tape and he's like, okay, is that fine for you? So eventually Zeke ends up going and getting food and and Carly eventually goes to a goes to, like, watch uh, some of the tapes, but then eventually she goes into the secret stash to find out what he has stashed away. So while Zeke is getting food, he's kind of like, you know what? Maybe there's maybe there's a reason why she... Maybe there's a reason why I left, and maybe I should come back. Maybe there's something about this. So reasonably we have Zeke eventually going his way back into his apartment we found out that Carly was looking at all kinds of other tapes of every single woman that Zeke at some point has slept with and he has slept with probably every woman possible in this building complex even Vida who he had killed even Naomi which he said he had no tie to and every single time Zeke has told them the exact same thing line over line again and again. So basically Carly at this point is completely and utterly betrayed. Because reasonably Zeke is feeding lines to women and ultimately every single time they have they have bought it hook, line, and sinker because it seems like he is performing so well that reasonably every single one love it, every single one buy it, and then evidently nobody actually knows from girl to girl to girl to girl that ultimately they are being fed the same line over and over again. Like, I think it gets to the point to where instead of feeding anybody a line how about just be honest with them how about just like like i think zeke was trying to do that but then again we also found out how much of a unreal person he really is how much we will probably find out that the more that carly maybe would have pulled at these strings that Zeke didn't probably have much to offer her but the same line of dialogue over and over and over again because maybe that's why these relationships never really lasted was because he didn't have anything new to say. He didn't have anything more to say. And that eventually even happens with any kind of relationship. Eventually you just kind of... Like you think a relationship is supposed to go a certain way because you seen too many movies or you think that you need to be like this uh, person that has like the perfect thing to say for every moment. And then when you're, you're kind of lost of like really just going like, well, like fuck, like I don't have anything to say. Like, there's a moment here where it has to just be like, well, F it, I... 
There is nothing cool to say at this moment. Uh, there's nothing for me to say but the thing that I've probably said a thousand times. That I love you, or that I, uh, I'm sorry, or that this and that. And it always comes down to those moments where, like, frustration builds or uh, something's finally just like, okay, I think this is, this is that moment where I feel um, so strongly about someone. So, we eventually have it to where Zeke is making his way back into the apartment building and Carly locks or closes the door on Zeke. And Zeke's like, why did you close the door? Like, I know you're watching me. Like, I see you looking at me. Peekaboo, you see me. So, ultimately, Zeke is like, hey, open the door. Open the f***ing door. <laughs> and ultimately, like, calls her a, uh, calls her any name that he can. So, eventually, Zeke opens the door himself. So, what ends up happening is, Carly ends up grabbing a gun. And as Zeke is kind of walking around to get to her... Carly is ticked off because reasonably she feels betrayed. So ultimately she is shooting up every TV and thing that Zeke has. And ultimately it just leads her to uh, destroy all this stuff. And that's just how the movie ends. It doesn't like say like, well... Yeah, Zeke has, has spent 15 years in prison for for all these deaths. No, like, it just ends with just the blowing up of all these TV screens and them just, like, being in this room together. Like, it doesn't cement that Zeke killed her. It doesn't cement that uh, Carly Citizen arrests Zeke or that the police were called at this point. None of this happened. Uh, it just ends like uh, an unresolved movie. So that's the one thing that I think I thought was like interesting about this. Like, well, what happened at the end? Did she call the police? Like, that's a, there should have been an ending to this. Maybe there's an alternate ending to this movie. I don't know. But I think with that, I think with how long this is, I'm going to go. I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.